Welcome back to chemistry. In this video, we're learning more about equilibrium constants and what they actually mean. And we'll talk about how to write equilibrium constant expressions. Now, let's practice by writing equilibrium constant expressions. So that's Kc, like we said in the last video, for each of the following reactions. So remember, it's products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. So in this case, we're going to have N2O times NO2 concentration all over NO3, I'm sorry, NO, and the NO has to be cubed since there's a 3 in front of that. So we can see how we write the equilibrium constant expression. Now, let's try another one. Here's a maybe a slightly more complex reaction. It's done the exact same way. Products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So here it's going to be C2 H6 squared times O2 all over C2H4, and that has to be squared, as you can see here, that's why there's a little 2 there, exponent, times H2O quantity squared. So there we have our expression for Kc. Now, in all the examples that we've done up to this point, we've had only gases. But as we know, there are other states of matter that take place in reactions as well. We can have solids, we can have liquids, we can have aqueous solutions. Well, in equilibrium constant expressions, we completely omit, we ignore liquids and solids. Now, that means that the only things that are going to be entered into an equilibrium constant expression will be gases and aqueous solutions. Okay, Liquids and solids basically have constant concentrations. They're Concentrations don't change, and so they don't affect the equilibrium. So if we had to write the equilibrium constant for this reaction right here, it would be CH4 concentration over H2 squared. And notice how I leave out the carbon because carbon is a solid, as we can see. Solids are not a part of this. How about this reaction here? We have two silvers plus a zinc. Two ion make a silver one ion or two silver one ions and a zinc atom. Well, we leave out the solids. It's going to be uh, Ag plus squared because there's a there's a two right there as our coefficient all over zinc, and that's it. We leave out the the solids because solids really are not going to to participate in equilibrium. It's just gases and aqueous solutions, as we can see. So that's our KC expression writing. Now, let's try another example of calculating the equilibrium constant. So we have another reaction here. We have N2 plus O2 yields uh, 2NO. And the question says, for the reaction shown here at 300 kelvins, a mixture of N2 and O2 react and are allowed to attain equilibrium. At equilibrium, the concentration of nitrogen monoxide is 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth molar, while N2 and O2 are both one molar. Calculate the equilibrium constant, Kc, at 300 kelvins. Well, once again, the first thing that we have to do is write the equilibrium constant expression. So that's products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So that's going to be NO squared all over N2 times O2 just like we have here. Now, we can just plug and chug those numbers from the problem into the expression that we just wrote. So NO is 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that goes in right in that spot right there. And we're going to have to square that. And then N2 and O2 will both be 1. And those will go into those respective places in the denominator. So when we evaluate this, this number, we can find that Kc is 1.49 times 10 to the negative tenth. So that's a very small number. Now, let's take a couple minutes here to talk about what the equilibrium constant means. Because in the examples that we've worked already, both in the last video and in this one, we had two completely different equilibrium constants. One was a big number, like 10 to the eighth. And then this last one was a very small number, 10 to the minus tenth. Well, if you ever have a very large equilibrium constant, and when I say large, I mean like 
generally speaking, greater than like a hundred or a thousand, you know, a fairly large equilibrium constant. That means that you're going to have a lot of product, not much reactant. So in our example equation, let's just say we have uh, A plus B yields C plus D as an example there. Well, if that's the, the a reaction, and of course, if it's an equilibrium, it would have to be a, a double-headed arrow there, so I'll put one in the other direction too. Well, what that means is if it's a large equilibrium constant, you'll have a lot of C and D, but you're not going to have very much reactant, A and B, left over. And because we have a lot of C and D, and we generally write the products on the right side of the arrow, we say that the equilibrium lies to the right. So if you hear that being stated in a, in a, maybe in a problem, or you hear me say it, or your, 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 your teacher say it, equilibrium lies to the right, that means we have a lot of, of products over here. That's what that means. Now, what if we have a very small equilibrium constant, like we had in the last slide, like 10 to the minus 10th or something like that? When I say small, I mean anything less than about, you know, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, you know, anything less than about 10 to the minus 2 or 10 to the minus 3rd is a very small equilibrium constant. Well, that means we're going to have a lot of reactant, and we're not going to make much product. So if we're going back to this example here, A plus B yields C plus D, if that were the reaction and we had a very small equilibrium constant, that means we're going to have a lot of A plus B, or a lot of A and B, and not much C and D not much product made. And since A and B, you know, the reactants are written on the, the left side of the arrow, we're going to say that equilibrium lies to the left. So that's what that means if you hear someone say equilibrium lies to the left. It means we have a lot of reactants because we generally write reactants on the left side of the arrow. So let's take a look at a couple of the examples that we uh, just just talked about here a moment ago. So here are two equilibrium constants. Here's one we had in the last slideshow, last video, and here's one we recently had. So 10 to the 8th, that's a large equilibrium constant. A lot of products, you know, lies to the right. Here's a very small number, uh, not much product, a lot of reactant, lies to the left. Now, when we talk about equilibrium constants, it is important to realize that even though we've been using Kc, it's not the only one that you can talk about. Sometimes it's actually more convenient to measure the partial pressure of a substance than it is to measure its concentration, especially if we're talking about uh, gases. And so we have this other type of equilibrium constant called Kp. And so if the C in Kc stood for concentration, I bet you can figure out what the P stands for in Kp. You know, it's, it's pressure, right? Because it's an equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. So let's take the same reaction that we had in the last video and write a Kp expression for that. Well, notice it's done the exact same way. It's products over reactants raise the power of the coefficient, except instead of having the brackets this time, we have the, the P, which means partial pressure. So it's the partial pressure of the ammonia squared, because there's a 2 right there, all over nitrogen's partial pressure, that's what the PN2 stands for, times the partial pressure of hydrogen cubed, because there's a 3 right there. Okay, so products over reactants raise the power of the coefficients, except it's with pressure this time, partial pressure. Now, is it possible to convert from Kc to Kp? Well, if I'm asking the question, it must be possible, right? So it's a definite yes. Here's the equation that we're going to use for that. Now, Kp, as we said, is our equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. Kc is in terms of concentration. R is the universal gas constant. And if you remember this from gas laws in first year chemistry, which we'll eventually get to in this course as well, it's equal to 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So we have that universal gas constant, 0.0821. Now T is temperature, and that's measured in Kelvins. 
And delta NG is the change in the number of moles of gas. And I'll show you how to calculate that here in just a second. So let's try an example. Now, let's use the same reaction that we had here earlier. Uh, this process called the Haber-Bosch process. The value of Kc is 1.3 times 10 to the 8th at 350 kelvins. Let's determine the value of Kp for that reaction at the same temperature. So once again, we're going to use the same, uh, the same equation that we had earlier. Kp equals Kc times Rt to the delta Ng. And we're just going to plug and chug. So Kp is what we're solving for. It says determine the value of Kp. So that's our unknown. Kc is given to us. It's 1.3 times 10 to the 8th. So that goes in for that. R is 0.0821, our universal gas constant. The T is the temperature in kelvins, which is 350 kelvins. So that goes in here. Now, delta Ng, what's the change in number of moles of gas? Well, let's look at the equation here. We have, looks like we have one mole of gas right here. And we have three moles of gas here. So on the reactant side, we have, you know, one plus three, which is four moles of gas. And on the product side, we have only two moles of gas. So it goes from four to two. Now, from what I'm seeing, that's a drop of two moles of gas. So that's a change of negative two. That's how you calculate that. You see how many it drops or gains by. So it went down by two moles. And now we can just solve the problem. So if I take my calculator and take 0.0821, times 350 to the negative 2 power, and then multiply it by Kc, I get that Kp equals 1.6 times 10 to the fifth. So as we can see here, it's actually a fairly straightforward process to be able to convert from Kc to Kp, or vice versa. So at this point, I hope you know what an equilibrium constant means. I hope you know that there's a Kc and there's a Kp, and how we can convert between those two and how we use Kp and how we use Kc. And hope you understand what the, the size of an equilibrium constant means, if it's very large or very, very small in magnitude. If you liked my video or learned something about equilibrium constants, please hit that thumbs up button if you'd be so kind as to do so. And hope you join my uh, subscriber list so that you won't miss a thing. I want you to score as high as you can in your chemistry class and make a five on the AP chemistry exam if that's what you're planning on doing. Uh, join me again where we're going to learn some more about equilibrium problems and how to solve those and a very special uh, method for solving equilibrium problems. Join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together.